Hello, this is Zuza from Software Mansion, and today with my friend Michal, we're excited to introduce React Native Wallet, a new library developed to help manage payment cards seamlessly on both iOS and Android platforms. Integrating payment solutions into React Native apps is a complex and time-consuming process, especially when it comes to in-app provisioning. It lets users add payment cards directly to their digital wallets, like Google Pay or Apple Wallet. This involves navigating multiple permissions, as well as adhering to each platform's unique security protocols, requirements, and UI guidelines that must be followed to ensure a seamless and secure user experience. So to make developer lives easier, we partner with Expensify to build a new library called React Native Wallet. It's designed to simplify and streamline the often complex process of in-app provisioning, making it much easier. Unlike many libraries that only end enable adding simple items like tickets or passes, our package empowers you to link payment cards directly to digital wallets. It's lightweight and doesn't require integrating bulky or paid SDKs, so your app stays efficient and fast. Let's see React Native Wallet in action on iOS. Our library provides ready-to-use Add to Wallet button components. They use the latest official assets provided by Google and Apple and are tailored to meet most of the branding guidelines. Here, I'll press this button, which uses the Add Card to Apple Wallet function from our library. This function is the heart of our package, managing the entire in-app provisioning flow. In addition to the card details, you can provide the card holder name and the card description that will be visible inside the Apple Wallet. You can check these values here. Once you confirm the details are correct, the real magic begins. React Native Wallet, with the use of Passkit on the iOS side, will now request the public certificates from the Apple servers. You need to use them in your specified callback function to encrypt the payment data on your card issuer side. Then, Passkit sends the information to Apple servers and the payment network operator. After everything is successfully validated, the user is shown the terms and conditions for approval. When accepted, Passkit runs the final checks and the card is successfully added to Apple Wallet. And just like that, the Add Card to Apple Wallet function simplifies what usually a complicated process into a quick single function call on React Native side. It works similarly on Android too, though there are a few key differences. As Michal said, there are indeed some differences in the Android flow. You need to provide a bit more data to add a card, but no worries, we've got you covered there too. The process begins with Get Secure Wallet Info. This call gives you a JSON object packed with device and wallet account information. These details are required by your card issuer to be able to return card data, for example, containing OPC or the last four digits of the card. And now you're ready to call Add Card to Google Wallet. Firstly, it checks if Google Wallet is available on the user's device. If not, it will try to initialize it. Once that's done, the native flow will be displayed. From this point on, the process is pretty similar across both platforms. When the push provisioning flow is complete, it's important to verify that the card was added successfully. And of course, the React Native Wallet library can help with that too. There are two functions available to check the status of the card. Depending on your use case, you can choose to use either a unique card identifier token or the last four digits of the card number. To wrap it up, the React Native Wallet library simplifies adding payment cards to both Apple and Google Wallet. It's user-friendly, aligns with all necessary guidelines, and supports a broad range of card providers. You can download it from NPM to boost your app's functionality. Just run NPM install at Expensify slash React Native Wallet in your project directory and follow all configuration steps that we've specified in our repo. Thanks for watching. Give it a try and don't hesitate to share your feedback with us on GitHub.